Hey guys, welcome back. So having just completed the delta and the beta types, uh, we are now in a position to analyze the psychology of them as a totality. And so just as we did with the four energetics, we're going to extract out a cognitive and qualitative essence from those types. Beginning first with the delta types. So the delta types are those individuals who have a FITE and an NESI axes. As I mentioned previously, the term delta was coined by Ashura Augusta from Socionics, and she uses the Greek letters alpha, beta, gamma, and delta for the four quadrants which emerge when you think of types in terms of axes. Because Model 1 is a function-oriented system only, and it never has had a four-letter code, the conjunction of function axes are fundamental and central to the theory's construction. So when you have the FITE axes conjoined with the any SI axes, you get the delta types, which is what we saw in the previous videos. And when you have the FETI axes combined together with the SE and I axes, you get the beta types. Now, to ask the question of, are the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta quadrants real? We have to look at whether or not we can extract out discrete realities from these concepts. Now, to paint a full picture of the quadrants, we look at it from the combination of the conductor types and the revisor types together. On the conductor side of things, which is the TE plus SI combination, we have what I broadly call the bureaucratic types. And on the other side here with the revisor delta types, we have the FI plus NE functions, which come together to create the ethereal types. Now, when I use these terms, I use them in the same manner as we used the qualia descriptions of the four energetics, such as the king energy or the puer energy. These are not to be taken literally as the occupations that these people have, but it's more a description of a manner of doing things. So although you will have quite a few bureaucrats that are TE and SI, and they deal with things like legislation and paperwork, and you'll see them in law and politics, at the same time, bureaucrat is more broadly speaking about the tendency to be exacting and to the letter in one's analysis of literal information and the consequential evolution of causality through those literal discrete data points. So for example, you might see the essence of the bureaucrat in a home inspector, the kind of person who walks around with the clipboard and jots down all the things that are missing or dysfunctional in a house. The same psychological property exists in that home inspector as it does in somebody writing law. And the same might apply to, for example, being in science research, which is also very data-driven and very mechanical in how it approaches information. But the bureaucrat may also be in a completely different occupation. So for example, they may be a, a sports coach. But even if they are a sports coach, they would be the kind of coach who is very delineated with their plays who treats the game itself as a kind of corporation that they're running. So the idea here is the bureaucrat is the manner in which TE and SI together emergently approach the situation. Now on the other side here, we have the etherealists embodied by such people as Aurora Axness, as we saw earlier, Florence Welsh. There's a lot of dreamy and fantastical energy, which is ethereal, but more fundamentally, more so than being dreamy, it's simply surreal. In other words, non-real. It's something other than the now. As we mentioned with the NEFI, there is this tendency to leap away in an open-ended way. And so that's kind of what's meant by dreamlike. It's this tendency to be whimsical and to fly and soar in an otherworldly way outside of where you are. And we can also see this tendency with the FINEs that we discussed. For example, with Frida, who says that all you need is love. Love is the source of everything. This kind of very romanticized statement, this very idealist statement, which is kind of removed from, again, from the literality of life, exists in a kind of ethereal space where on one hand, anything can happen, that's any. And on the other hand, what we choose to make happen is those things that are resonant with us and satisfy our wildest desires. So that's the qualia of the etherealists. Now you may notice that these two are kind of diametrically opposed to each other, right? Even though they're showing the same signals, if you think about it, one is very meticulous and exacting in what is actually here. The other is flying away from what is here to what could be. One is very much about mechanical causality and what must happen. The other is about what we ought to want to happen regardless of its practicality. But this tension that exists between them is a, it's the whole tension of the delta types. It is within each delta type to experience 
this internal polemic. The, so it's like the whole polemic is central to the delta type and that's partially what defines the delta type. So if the delta type is a conductor, they'll be primarily bureaucratic with an ethereal side underneath them and vice versa. If they're an etherealist, they'll have a bureaucratic undertone to them. And that's the holistic quadra. And when we start getting into the non-standard development levels, you're going to start to see how different delta types actually merge these two sides of the poles in their personality. They'll be doing things like doing science on one hand and then doing fantasy fairy tales on the other. And when you start to see that, it really will start to hit home that this is like an entire psychology that has two polarities within the same structure. Now, as for the beta types, on the conductor side of the functions, we have Fe and Ni, and together, these are called the sectarians. And on the reviser side of things, we have TISE combined together, which give an emergence that we call the sensationalist. So as with the delta types, the labels here are symbolic and they're qualitative. So sectarian refers to somebody who belongs to a given sect. And the reason we use that word is because if you look at what the combination of Fe and Ni have done in the sample so far, there is this proclivity for them to become, well, on the NIFE side, gurus and leaders who oftentimes have a following around them of believers. And on the Fe and I side of things, you have life coaches who also have a following around them. And that's because Fe as the function has this charismatic quality to it that rallies people together. And that creates a sect around it oftentimes. And that revolves around usually a kind of ethic of a, of a way to be, a how to live. But Fe on its own is not fully responsible for this because you also have Ni. And Ni is creating convergent universal viewpoints. Things in some sense, all of reality kind of converges in smaller and smaller, simpler forms such that for the beta type, things ultimately come back down to, to either one in a, in a monistic or monadic sense to, to one core universal principle or to a few that are central. And because other beta types also sense this within their own cognitive architecture, they, they internally resonate with this one solution viewpoint. So when you, when you have this charismatic grouping effect of Fe with the one truth motif of Ni, then you get sectarians necessarily because there's a group of people rallying around a one way to be. And that singularity, that oneness, that, that unification, that holism creates a sect around it because there is philosophical and moral convergence within that group as to what is the way to be. That is one of the core properties that Fe and I accomplish when they're combined together. Now, on the reviser side of things, we have the sensationalist, which is Ti plus Se working in tandem. And as we saw with the video so far, there's a lot of convergent motifs around athletics, but also around music and around painting, all of which have a strong connection with sensation. Now, I have to clarify something. Earlier, I mentioned that in Model 1, S does not stand for sensation necessarily. S stands for literality, because that, that is more true of the general combination of SE and SI. What's similar between them is literality. And I would not call SI a sensation process. It's, it's more of an archival process. However, PE is an exploratory process and the way that it explores is through stimulus. That stimulus for SC specifically tends to be much more literal. So literal stimulus translates to a, an, an inclination anyway towards sensory experiences. I have to add that disclaimer because at the cognitive level, SE is not bound only to the sensory and SC is a, a cognitive process, more of a cortical process. So I use the word sensationalist in an analytical sense as somebody who is an analyst of sensory experiences. So these are the two sides of the beta types and they also have a kind of internal tension inside of them. On the one hand, you have this deep focus on the universal and the timeless and the ethical and the personal. But on the other side, you have a focus on, on the immediate and the contemporary, as well as the analytical and the more impersonal. And that is a duality which exists in every beta type and each beta type deals with that duality in different ways, but it's the core drama of what it means to be a beta type, which comes with a, a lot of different creative solutions which all these individual members of this group come up with in order to address the, their existential predicament. So, okay, on the whole, the delta types can be described as bureaucratic etherealists and the beta types are described as sectarian sensationalists. Now we're gonna look at 
the gamma types. 